What it do, what it do, what it do. How's everybody doing? Sorry I'm late. I um I I just I just finished uh, interviewing uh Miles Turner um for Fubo. How's everybody doing today? Can y'all hear me? Yeah, y'all I think y'all can hear me because I just finished. Um going live, so hmm. So I got another victim. <laughs> and I thought I was done with this beef stuff, but I didn't I didn't realize, you know, dude named Charles has been, you know, looking for my attention. Um I didn't know. Um I'm sorry I don't <laughs> I don't, you know, I didn't know Charles you knew sports like that. Um now, the, the, Charles, I've I've went through your videos. We're gonna go through some of your videos, Charles, right? And we're gonna dissect your videos, Charles. You got questions for me, Charles, and I'm gonna answer them. Um, just to let you know how this goes, this how this works is, um, I don't care about your opinion. Hmm? I, I don't care about your feelings, right? Facts or not is all I deal with, right? So when I respond, it's all facts, right? When you try to respond, fuck your feelings. I don't care about your feelings, right? Your feelings doesn't make it change. The facts do. So you're going to have to beat me with facts, Now, how do you beat an NBA player who played at high levels with facts? And you have Google? All right. Before we get into your first video, so I got all your videos that I I, 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 I can get to. Just so you understand who I am, um, I'll, you can hear my high school coach talk about me in the process of my brain. So then you will see why you don't understand how I work. All right. We'll let my high school coach tell you how I process stuff and how fast I process it. That takes two years to really figure it out. You figured it out like the first week. The first week you figured that kind of stuff out. The first week he figured out, okay, I got to get to here on the weak side when the ball's being passed. He figured that kind of stuff out. Yeah, I mean, wonderful. but Gil, for you, it's almost hard to explain that. It's just natural. The way that I've seen you watch games and the way you look at things. Um, I was watching the, the play. But, but if you can see the teacher, you, you know, you can see how the uh, how he's processing it. Same way how I was processing it. Uh -huh. You know, trying to figure out what he's trying to get me to see. So I got to hurry it up. would and... take us. <laughs> would take me years to figure it out. And I figured it out a lot on my own. It took him a couple of days, and he didn't know it. it took, uh, we'd teach a certain angle to the hoop, okay? And it's a matter of inches on that block. Mm -hmm. If you're on the inside of the block and you shoot a, even a wild layup, you, you're gonna make 60, 70%. If you're on the outside, just a half an inch on the outside of the block, all of a sudden you lose your angle and in, instead of shooting 65% on that little layup or that little five footer, you're shooting 45%. He understood that right away. His geometry, Gilbert's geometry on the court is incredible. It's absolutely, inc and you know, you probably never got more than a C in a geometry class, <laughs> yeah. right? Right? Yeah. But. <laughs> You know, they always That's go, another part we, of the story for another need, time. What do, you know, he always gets things. What do you need geometry for? You know, I'm never going to use this. And I, <laughs> yeah, I would mention in my later my years at Grant said, "You know, are you kidding me? That our our greatest basketball player was the greatest per person concerning geometry. His angles, he had an intuitive sense of all the different 
theorems that you had to learn <laughs> yes. in geometry. And, and he'd create that on the basketball court on the fly. I, nobody does that. Nobody yeah, so has basketball, ever done you should have been on the honor roll right there. Well, he, if he would have applied himself in that yeah, direction, I, he would have. Yeah. It, what was so funny is my math teacher was like, why don't you just use what you do with basketball here? <laughs> and I was like, I can use this over there. Yeah, but you know what? <laughs> you can use that. You know what? Just can use them. Good. And he, got to, he understood what I was talking about in, intuitively. And he never had some of this stuff, but intuitively he had this incredible, he has. He still does, yeah, of course. He has this incredible sense of the basketball court and the game that, that by the time you were a senior, remember I was telling you that, you know, you know more about this game than, than I do, but you don't know that yet. You've got, you've got a feel for this game that I cannot touch anymore, but you don't know that yet. You have, but uh, that was, I would say something and he would understand it more so than anybody else on the team. You would understand that even when he didn't even think he was a basketball player yet, he understood <laughs> it. Oh, that, that was an amazing thing about it. It's all IQ. All right, so Charles, that's my, um, that's my high school coach, right? <clears throat> um, now, sometimes it's, it's hard for me to speak to, you know, I guess regular regular YouTubers. I, I, is that what you, regular YouTubers? It's hard to speak to regular YouTubers because they can't process the shit that I do. Just like uh, you know, someone in you know computers. You know, no matter how many, you know, how long they talking to you, you don't know what the fuck they talking about, huh? Um, and I think that's where we 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 have or, or you have this issue with me that I make takes. And they seem outlandish to you. Fuck the take. Am I wrong? That's what you got to answer. Am I wrong in my takes? Is the is the is the is the is the is the real question that you have to ask yourself, right? When I said the USA team was a D team, and everybody oh it's outlandish, and then they lost, right? You know what I mean? It's it's. I can I can see something you can't. And this is gonna hurt a little bit, right? I'm I'm not gonna be disrespectful. It's gonna hurt a little bit though, right? Your credibility, it's gonna hurt a little bit, you know. Um stay away from me. You know, I'm just one of the dudes you do like everybody else does. Just stay away from me. That's that's what they all do. Like, because I have, I, I understand this concept. Everybody listens for keywords. I'm great at that, right? I'm better than Steph by the age of 25. Knowing your little brain only heard I'm better than Steph, right? So then you get to type it in, oh, this is so disrespectful and get to going and da, 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 and then realize the rest of the, the rest of the sentence, right? You listen, you listen to respond, not here to understand. Um, but I'm a teacher today, sir. Since I'm your buffoon, damn, you're about to get an education by a buffoon, a bigot. I didn't even know what the fuck that was. I had to Google that. <laughs> the bigot, what the fuck? <laughs> Sound like some 80s shit. I had to Google that. I didn't even know what that was. Big it. It sounds like some. Mm. All right, let's go. Let's see. Let's go through your first video. You know, you the type of dude that I I use your video and you flag me. You know, so I, I'm smart. I, I, I won't flag you. Not, you know, I don't, I don't do flagging. All right, let's see which one is this one is. Okay, we're gonna start from the back. You know, because this is this is interesting right here, Charles. Right. I just get I just get to the good part. Let me just make sure. So we. We're going to go back first, and then we're going to come forward. All right. This current era that we're in, what, what's the thing that makes it the best era, right? What are the players in this era that will make us say, um, you know, this is the greatest era of all time? Not, like, if you listen to Gilbert Arenas' point, one of the points he was making was that 
even though MJ came into the league in 90, was it 98? Oh, excuse me, 80, what, 86 or something like that. Okay. If you're going to talk sports, please know the information. He was, he came in the league in 84, not 86, not 88, 84. Okay. Just want to correct you there. Move he on. didn't really develop into who he was until he was in the nineties. That was an argument he was making. And he called and he had some, some other players that he was calling tweener. So all of those guys that were drafted in the mid eighties, late eighties, he was saying that these guys were really nineties players. And that the guys that were drafted in the, in the nineties were really early 2000 players, right? That this was, this was basically his premise. Okay. Well, let me correct you. Um, Tweening players is players who are drafted. Okay, Charles, a decade. A decade is from the beginning of the, uh, the uh, decade to the end of the decade. You know, when they say all decade team, that means your stats have to be from the zero, zero, so 1980 to 1989, right? That's your stats. So, when you get drafted in the middle of a decade, right? You get drafted in 85 and 86. How can you be a decade? How can you win that decade or be part of that decade if you got six or seven years of no stats? Like you really got to come out of the gate swinging, sir, right? So for the most part, some players can never be decade players just because how they got drafted. Um so that's the tween. The tween is a few years. It's like um, 84 to 86. You know, those players, they get trapped into the decade. So um, like some people like, you know, Jordan, Charles Barkley, Hakeem, right? They all got drafted shit. Um, John Stockton, they're all drafted in 84, right? There's only one player who's first team all decade. That's MJ because of his stats early. Um, other than that, he's going against somebody who started a decade four years in front of him. So they got four years of stats. That's what tw tweening means. So, you know, because of, you know, where they got drafted, 94. So, you know, he got uh, injured in 95. He got injured the following year. So, you know, in the 80s, MJ played basically five years. So his five years have to take up, you know, someone's 10 years, just, just to give you just a little education on how it works. So if you was in the 80s, you're not a 90s player. It's a, it's a certain date, right? If you're the 90s player, it's a certain date before you can, you know, just I know you, you, you're a YouTuber and you don't know the ins and outs, but that's, that's it. Just, now, this is funny because you're going to, y'all will hear it. And to me, I thought that was a wacky take to make. These guys were drafted when they were drafted. If you go look at Michael Jordan's numbers in his rookie year, you would see how good he was. If you go look at Allen Iverson's rookie numbers, you see how good he was. If you go look at LeBron James's rookie numbers, you see how good he was, and so on and so forth. Obviously, players get better over time. This is the case for pretty much everyone with the exception of Ben Simmons. But usually, this is what happens, right? So him making that argument, I didn't really, uh, I didn't really, um, I didn't really follow it. Now, okay, so he didn't follow my argument about mid eighties players being decade players in another generation, right? Another decade, right? So if you 95, six, seven, and you go, you know, you're in 86, 87, 85, by the time you start balling and you do, you, you, you in the following. So you're in nineties, right? So Hakeem is known for the nineties, right? John Stockton's known for the nineties, right? They got, they got drafted in 84. Just, just so you know, um, you know, Charles Barkley, you know, John Stockton, Hakeem, right? Y'all know him as 90s players, even though he was drafted in 84. Now, now listen to him. He about to talk backwards and say the same shit I said, but he don't understand my view. I then decided to take it a step further. If this is the best era, it means that we're looking at players like who? Stephen Curry, Kevin Durant the LeBron James of the world, the Russell Westbrook's of the world, uh, the Anthony Davis of the world, the Kawhi Leonard's of the world, the D-Ways of the world, the Dirk of the world. When were these guys drafted? These guys were drafted, some of them in the 90s, some of them in the early 2000s. When you say some, that's more than one. Now, I don't know how long you've been doing sports, 
But let me go ahead and give you a little update. Okay. Curry, 2010 player, right? You know, he's, he's, he's in the back of the 2000s. KD, 7'8", right? LBJ, 2004, right? <laughs> Listen, out of everybody you named, only the fucking dirt was in the 90s at the end of the 90s. Just one fucking, play, not some, some of those, just one, just one. Do you know how to use Google? Do you know Google yet? Right? Like, I can guess who you like. I can guess who supports you because y'all don't know how to use Google correctly. One player, sir. You're talking about a 20-year gap. So you're telling me that the guys that make this era so great are guys that were drafted 10 plus years ago? Like, this is craziness. That's, uh, that, 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 that's, the, that's the first part. And if you remove those guys, who are we left with? If you move remove those guys, who are you left with? Uh, I mean, that's Tim Duncan, you know, uh, Kevin Garnett, Allen Iverson, Kobe. I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Trey Young, John Morant, Luka Doncic, Joel Embiid, and a few other players, maybe Nikola Jokic and a few other players. Not one of them are considered um, greats yet, sir. Like, you know, there's still, you know, the, the, the ones before that, that's in the 2000s. You know, you heard of Tim, right? Best, best power forward of all. Yeah. You look hot. Players that I can't, I can't really think of. Now, let me give you guys some of the top players in the, in the 80s. Oh, give us some top players in the 80s, sir. I'm just going to give you guys a list of the top players in the 80s where Gilbert Arenas is saying that these guys were drunkards and trash. Let me give you the guys that played in the 80s, right? Maybe, maybe, they'll, maybe, maybe they'll ring a bell. Charles Bark. So he's looking off of Google. Now, the problem with him looking off of Google, he typed in best 80s players, and then it comes with a list. Michael Jordan, Urban Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Alex English. If you don't know who that is, educate yourself. George Gervin. George Gervin came in the league in 72, so he's a 70s player, but you probably knew that. Hakeem Olajuwon, Kevin McHale, James Worthy. Dominique Wilkins, Julius Irvin. Julius Irvin was drafted in 72 also, sir. He's a 70s player, but you probably knew that. Dr. J, Isaiah Thomas, Moses Malone. Um, what is it? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He was, he was drafted in 70, sir. Carry on. Clyde Drexler, Bill Walton. Those are about 18 of the top 75 players. Those guys all played in the 80s. All of them were drafted in the 80s. All of these guys that you just heard. They were just, they were always drafted in the 80s. Magic 79, 79, but those are 80s players. Alex English, 76. He's an 80s player. George Gervin, 70s and 80s. Um, you know, Dr. J, 70s and 80s. He was a uh, 70s first all team. He was all decade. <laughs> uh, Moses Malone, he's the tweener, right? He's a tweener. He's coming in in 75, right? People came in in 70. So compare his stats at the end of the year to like Julius Irvin. You know, you see how his, so he he probably for the 70s, he's probably third team if he made it because he only has five years in that decade. Bill Walton. Now, the problem with the statement is this. Top 75. Do you remember the top 50, sir? The top 50, I think the youngest player on the top 50 was Shaquille O'Neal, right? Top 50 was Shaquille O'Neal. Think about everybody who came in the league after Shaquille O'Neal, sir. And they only put 25 more people in there. Right? 25. So that means they grandfathered in that 50. They grandfathered in that 50. Now, what they should have did was took everybody out of it and then put the top 75. There's people in the top 50 who didn't even start for some of their teams. Bill Walton himself, he got 5,000 points total, 4,000 rebounds. 
you, you get my point? So they in, that, that was the reason they did it. They inherited. Now, here's, here's something you should Google. When you take the top players in each position, you know, top point guards of all time, you know, you can do five or ten, however, however it make you feel better. Shooting guard, small forward, power forward, centers. Um, you should see where the ranking and who holds the most players. Who holds the most talent each position? I did quick math. And the quick math is this. You can take the 90s the 80s, the 70s, and the 60s. That's 40 years. You have 22 players that's considered top. The 2000s and the 2010s, you got 19. You got 22 with 40 years. 20 years, you got 19. And Giannis is not in there. <laughs> Embiid is not in there, right? Kawhi is not in there. Yeah, Anthony Davis not in there yet. Um, Jokic, they, you know, Kyrie, they're not in there yet. You, you know what, what makes it sound stupid? The league started in the 70s, emerged in, you know, the, the end of the 70s and 80s. So do you really think the, the 80s really had the, that kind of talent with the big drug problem they had? Like, you really, you really think they was like that? Let's just be honest. All the drugs that they were doing in that era, do you, they had no trainers. They had three people on the coaching staff. And you, you really. They had to move the, they had to move the three point line forward. Cause they couldn't shoot. Sir. They couldn't shoot. So they had to move the, the three point line forward. It was 24 inches and they had to move it to 22 because the fuckers couldn't shoot. And they moved, they did that in 94. The year Jordan was on vacation playing baseball, that summer they changed it and moved it up because the players couldn't shoot for shit. They were all drafted in the 80s and all played, excuse me, in the 80s. These were 80s players. If you go further back, you're looking at Earl Monroe, Elvin Hayes, Hal uh, Greer, Willis Reed, Paul Arizon, uh, Dave Bing, Bob Cousy, Robert Parrish, Bill uh, uh, Cunningham, and the list goes on and on and on. Those are guys that were pre the 80s. Now you go look at the top 75 players, the list that was comprised by the NBA. All of these players comprise this list. So what are we saying? What are we saying? There were great players in every era. So to say that the 80s were trash is like somebody going into 2030 and looking back at players now like the Stephen Curry's in this era and saying it's trash. Would that uh, I don't know if you've been paying attention to just history. 50s and 60s. 60s said the 50s was trash. The 70s said the, <laughs> the 60s was trash. The 80s said the 70s was trash. The 90s said the 80s was trash. The 2000s said the 90s was trash. You, you, do you get the fucking point? Hmm? Do you get the point? Right? Like Michael Jordan was 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 the best shooting guard, right? What decade do you want to give him? I'll let you pick, right? I'll let you pick whatever decade you want, sir. That makes you feel good about yourself, because obviously I must have said something about one of your favorite players, and this is what we have here. So whatever player you want to use, sir, Jordan was he the best shooting guard in the eighties or the nineties? Now you tell me who the second best shooting guard is, the third best shooting guard is, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh. 
I'm pretty sure they wouldn't be in the fucking 80s or the 90s. Right, you know, we, you know, we have guys like, you know, remember, you know, AI, D-Wade, you know, Kobe, you, you know them, you know, those guys, you remember? You, you remember those guys, right? Go on ahead and say someone who averaged fucking 14 points, <laughs> shot 20% from the three-point line. Like, come on, stop. A fly? It obviously wouldn't. So for Gilbert Arenas to make that point, he kind of lost me there. But hey, maybe some of you guys will get it. So what I want to know from you guys is what do you think about Gilbert Arenas' take? Whatever you guys think, leave your thoughts in the comments and we'll catch you on the next show. Hmm. I mean, you see what I, I think about to take that. Obviously, you, you, you don't know what you're talking about yet, but. Uh, yeah. Um. All right, which. We're going to go to the next one. I mean, mm, see where you want to go. Where, where you want to go? Let's let's try this video. You know, I'm going to go from video to video because, you know, I think you need this. You know, you've been barking up the tree for a long time, it looks like. But, you know, I just want to give you the exposure you was looking for, my man. That's all. No disrespect. Let me see what you're talking about here. I even get into that I, I actually put up a post on our community a few minutes ago before we even, pro even produced the show and i said when will nba players start holding themselves accountable when you have people like gilbert arenas trolling constantly and then incidentally apparently nba top 75 player paul pierce caught a whiff of what katie had to say i mean katie uh, gilbert arenas had to say and he pulled and he basically called them out so i want to read quickly from an article called a sports kid where they basically covered this they basically covered what he had to say and then paul pierce said in response to gilbert arenas he said you you crazy paul said paul said put some respect on dream's name first of all that move dream made up on the baseline with one arm with the one arm fake layup they still doing that today stop it uh paul pierce said so i'm happy to see a current nba player actually say something um you know to gilbert arenas so Um, he checked me. What did he say? What, what, what did he do? I, I'm confused. He, he checked me by saying what exactly? That people are still using the move? What sinner is using the move? Huh? What's, what, what sinner is using the move, sir? Um, hmm. you know what, because I didn't realize this was Giannis, we going because we got Giannis here and we got Giannis again, right? I want to go before Giannis. I, I want to go, this is Giannis too. Which one is this? Okay. Okay. We're going to go here. Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. This is a good one. So we're going we're gonna to put the Giannis one together. We're going to put that together because that, that, that should be together, you know. We're going to go, we're going to go Steven Jackson. This is, this is a good one, All right? That's another episode of the Jimmy Pro Show. We'll cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic, based entertainment. And we give you guys the first respect. Hey, man, that's, a, that's an amazing intro. You know, got the little colors and shit. I mean, they want things and I we see them. You see, I keep getting my words twisted up because some, some people are saying I say my last name too fast. So it's Charles Tuban C. So I had to uh, had to slow that down. But anyway, anyway, we got a show for you guys here today that I'm going to absolutely enjoy. I'm not even going to lie to you now. As you guys know, uh, Gilbert Arenas is one of these people that we now consider media members of the media in the sports media realm. He comes from the angle of being a former athlete. He also has a very popular show called uh, Gil's Arena. Uh, usually on this show, the main guests are Kenny Martin, Rashard McCant. And Brandon Jennings, and they talk about a range of things. They pass on explosive arguments here and there. But a few months ago, or about two months ago or so, they had a discussion on their panel, and they were talking about the importance of rings or lack thereof, right? Because as you guys know, Gilbert Arenas was a very talented basketball player, all-star, um, great score, incredible score when he played in the NBA. 
So he's very talented, but he was one of these gentlemen that never won an NBA championship. And they were reacting to some comments that Robert Ori had made, who has won seven championships. He won championships with the Rockets. He won championships with the Spurs and he won championships with the Lakers, right? Big shot, Bob, right? He hit some very, very clutch uh, shots in the playoffs. So they were reacting to that. And basically the backstory essentially was, what would you rather have? Would you have, would you rather have the money? you know, that comes with playing in the NBA and everything that comes with that? Or would you rather be a champion and have less money than, you know, a guy that probably made all this, a boatload of money, for example, like a Gilbert Arenas who said he made about $170 million uh, as an NBA player, you know, versus uh, versus something like that. And they got into this very, very, very heated debate, right? Very heated debate. Well, apparently what happened was Steven Jackson, who's an NBA champion, great player, uh, who now is in sports media realm. He has a show, All the Smoke, with him and Matt Barnes. Great podcast, one of the more serious podcasts uh out there and one of the guys that really got into the business early and really started paving the way uh for the guys that you see coming after them so he caught a whiff of these comments right and steven jackson what i like about him is that he, he's gonna tell it he's gonna tell it like it is he's gonna tell it like it is and, and if you like it it's fine if you don't like it it's fine but he's gonna speak his piece so apparently he caught a whiff of what gilbert arenas was saying and he did a response video to that which i thought was very entertaining but most importantly very important but before we even get to his comments we want to play the initial exchange between Gilbert Arenas and his panel on there, you know, when they were talking about this, to give you guys the full backstory of this. It's, it's a little bit lengthy, but I want you guys to listen to it in its entirety. Otherwise, what Steven Jackson, Jackson says in return is not really going to make any sense. So take a listen to this exchange. Okay, we, 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 we've been through this. We've heard it. <clears throat> but the original statement had nothing to do with anybody. It was, would you rather have James Harden's career with no rings or would you rather have, um, you know, Robert Horry? Right. That was the initial. Now, you heard my coach, right? Right. I, I look at things different. Um, now, when I take Robert Horry's career, I say, all right, he played 17 years. He made $54 million. That's what, about $3 million a year, right? I know what that player looks like in that era. Right? I know what that player looks like in that era. Remember, you... you your money dictates how hard you play for that organization, right? So if he got 57 rings, 58 million, he was worth about a three, he was a $3 million player, right? That is also a work ethic also. That's a mediocre work ethic who's settled and who's willing to just be there, right? My brain doesn't work like that. You know, I'll rather try something do it the best and fail, right? That's that. That's my angle, right? I'd rather, like, if we asked you who played harder on the court, Allen Iverson or, you know, Bob, I'm pretty sure 100% would say Allen Iverson, right? So how is Allen Iverson loser if he's the one that's playing a thousand miles an hour every single day, right? That that That's the premises, right? Like, would you rather take the risk to be great and fail, or would you rather just sit behind, let someone else do the charity work for you, right? So um, now th this is going to be a problem for you because change there. Well, you don't know history. That's the problem. Apparently, about 24 hours ago, Stephen Jackson looked like he was going somewhere. And something caused him to respond to some of the comments that Gil well, uh, Stephen Jackson wasn't responding to me. He was responding to Jeff T. Like the original comment was 300 million or 50. Right. It changed from Jeff T. Max deal, 100 million or 50. Right. The same shit he does. But arenas and these guys made. And, um, you know, he did a response show. So what we want to do is we want to quickly play what he had to say. It's only about a minute clip. And then we're going to really get into the show. So take a listen to what Stephen Jackson had to say here. Hey, what up, world? We out here in all the smoke in LA doing some epic shit, right? And I'm tired of seeing this shit on Instagram coming from basketball players. And that's why a lot of y'all losers. It's no way, if you ain't come from nothing, then you understand why people say they would rather 50 million and a championship. Because I care about being the best at what at the gift God gave me. I, it would suck to play the game of basketball and never say you was a champion. You was never the best in the world. 50 million is enough for people who come from nothing. We know how to make that work. That 50 million is like 200 million to us. But it goes to show the people who struggled and the people who didn't struggle. Talking about, I'll take 100 million and f the championship. Nah, I'll take 50 million and that championship. But you're not a winner. You, you don't want to be the best. You just want to maintain them and, and, and just go along. Nah, that's the difference between a lot of the champions and y'all. Yeah, y'all made y'all money, but y'all weren't the best at nothing. 
So you heard what he had to say. Now let's really get into the show here. Let's let's get into it. You know, we produced a show a few days ago discussing Gilbert Arenas and some of his comments about NBA legend Hakeem Olajuwon. And I said that only dull light bulbs uh, are attracted to people that, you know, Gilbert Arenas and the stuff that he says, right? And I've heard people say that, oh my God, this dude is a genius. He's so well-spoken and all of this stuff. Well, if you were listening to what he said in that clip at the very end, this genius of yours basically said, who would you rather be? Listen to this. Kobe Bryant or Derek Fisher? And he was actually looking for an answer, right? That's why I told you only slow dudes follow Gilbert Arenas and think what he says is smart. The argument is, would you rather be a champion that made some money or be a guy that made a lot of money but never won anything? In the case of... Now, there's a lot of people that, right? I'm the loser. What Stack said is the, that's that's the shit, right? That's the shit, right? 50 million in the ring, right? Because we some losers, right? Right? You know, you're going to have dude jump. Oh, yeah, you know. I, I, here's, here's something. I'm a loser for turning down 50 million for $300 million, right? I'm going to tell you a fucking story. Here's a story. Someone won a championship in 2003, coming off the bench, averaging 10 points, making 700,000. Champion. 700,000. Champion. They offered him three-year, $10 million. Turns it down. Right? They said, we... We want to win back to back. Turns it down. So the team took the offer and said, we good on you. He had to go sign a one-year deal for $1 million. So let's do the fucking math. You know, we have a deal. Three-year, $10 million, right? He turned it down to win back to back, right? He had to sign a one year deal, one year for 1 million. Mm -hmm. Okay. He averaged 18 points, 18 points and got a two year, $10 million deal. So he got two year plus 10. Now, now, the math here is one team offered him three year 10. In the same three years, he got three year 11. In reality, because the Spurs won the championship two years later, he turned down the championship for one fucking million dollars. Turn down the championship for one million is what actually ended up being the math. Three year 11, three year 10, but they won the chip. Losers, we losers because we we chasing money. He would have been a two time champion as a starter. What do you think that bag would have been if he would have stayed for the same money he ended up signing for anyway? I know that because my agent was his agent. Now, who cares, right? You know, whoever goes against me, you're cool with. But the the problem is, I, I got the I got facts. I don't do, I don't just throw shit out there. That's why it's hard to fucking come at me. I use facts and facts only. Now, I'm gonna play something that was just released four or five days ago. Remember, it's about winning mentalities and losing mentalities 
There's a winning mentality. There's a losing mentality, right? We hear what motherfuckers say when they retire, but in real time, we see the decisions they make, right? Now y'all tell me what type of mentality this is since this is the people they want to lobby for. And me and Stack is fine. He wasn't talking about me. So I just want to point out everything, right? You know, when you're saying I'm a buffoon and I say random shit, am I? Hear the stories about the Pat Riley training camps. Mm -hmm. He had the four trash cans on the corner. Make you throw up. Okay, so you know the court. It's almost like a long rectangle, right? And he would put trash cans on the corners. So while you're turning, you stop. Real quick, keep, keep it moving. Going, bro. Keep going, and then your corner. Damn. But the running was so tough that he was making guys throw up on themselves. I went to a mini, not even training camp. You know, they got the mini camp in the summer before a training camp. Yep. Oh. I went to that. Yeah. First, after stretch, 10 minutes on the clock. 10 minutes of three man weed. <laughs> That's so I don't want to play, play here. I don't want to play I, don't, I do not want to play here. I, Man. Show them show them yeah. Nah. Those training camps used to test your love and your commitment towards the league. Yeah, no, I didn't no. love the game as much as no. I thought. Do you need to hear that again? Hey, uh, <clears throat> Dream, Dreams, do you, Dreamers, do you want to hear it again? It's just, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Let me, let me hear this again. Test your love and your commitment towards the league. Yeah, no. I didn't love the game as much as no. I thought. It's not my podcast. I didn't say it. No, don't get it. I, I'm, he said it. I didn't say it. <laughs> I didn't say it. You know what I mean? He, he said what he didn't, you know, he didn't want to do. And he out his own mouth, but you know, you know. Hmm. So I, I'm pretty sure we don't need to listen to no more of this because we realize in real life what it really is, right? What it really is in real life. Turn down money to win a back to back to go get money, turn down back-to-back -back championships and to being part of a championship culture, turn it down for money, right? Turn it down for money, that's it. Turn it down for money, it's, 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 it's in history. There's no, there's, no, there's, no, there's no change in that, right? He, he won a championship, you, they telling you, this is what we're gonna give you and you have a chance to go back-to-back -back and win multiple championships, no, I want money. And, and then they went on to keep winning more championships, right? They, they won two more in the next four years, which he would have been a three-time champion. Mm. Uh, man. Now, before I get to this next one, this is, this is weird, but... Hey... I, is James Harden a great defender, people? Like, if I said, if I said that, hmm, how do I want to? Right? You know what? Fuck it. I was going to like try to bait you guys into it, but let me just, it, it, we don't got time. We don't got time to be playing childish games so let me just let me just go to it because here's another take that my man thinks is stupid hold on you know i, I don't know man uh, who is this girl gets her uh, i mean look at his titles but it's okay all right let's listen another episode of the dreamers pro show where we cover everything from sports hot topics classic debates entertainment and when we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them and today, we got a pretty interesting show. But before we get into it, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Well, yes, we're back. We are I mean, officially back. I mean, we I mean actually like announced it. our return in another, in another show. It all depends on the order in which you guys 
uh, are watching these shows here today. I know we gave you guys a good prank on our way out, but we just said, hey, if we're going to if we're going to go on a break, let's just have some fun with, with the audience. I know we got a lot of people. I apologize. A lot of people uh, really took it uh, really took it strongly. But listen, uh, we appreciate all the support. Uh, we read a lot of comments, which showed us that we have a lot of support out there, and it's something that we appreciate. I'm sure we pissed off some haters uh, towards the end of that video when they found out we were just kidding. But anyway, uh, we just did it in Justin uh, to have some fun. But anyway, we're back today. Now, during my break. Mm -hmm. There were a bunch of things happening, right? And I was following various news outlets uh, to just kind of stay abreast of what was happening. I can disconnect from my work, but I can't disconnect from the news because otherwise, you know, uh, you're, you're going to have a hard time catching up to what just happened um, when you when you get back to work. So I was following various things that were taking place in the sports landscape. So what happened? I was coming through the internet, just chilling on YouTube, and then a video was recommended to me by Tour Office Sports. And in this video, it was essentially addressing some comments that Gilbert Arenas made about the late great uh kobe bryant right and i was like okay what did gilbert arenas have to say about kobe bryant uh today right because gilbert arenas has this reputation of flip-flopping one day he'll say one thing the next day he'll say the other thing <laughs> so i looked at the title of it hey you picked up on that day you be studying me like one week i'm like lebron james the next week i'm michael jordan because i realized there's no winning. <laughs> so I might as well just, you know, I, I might as well just play with both both sides of the fans. You figure that out. Yeah. I like them both. So this week, Joe is the king. Next week, LeBron's the king. All right? Who cares? This show, and it said, Gilbert Arenas called Kobe Bryant trash on defense. The moment I read that title, I immediately knew that Two Raw was going to go off on him. I knew this already. But before I even clicked on the video, I had to re reconcile reconcile my emotions <gasps> and how I reacted to it initially. Your emotions? I heard his emotions. Making a take. When I first heard that, it was maddening. Maddening. It was vexing Vex. I don't for know, so many different I don't even know what that word is, but it's it sounds whoo, crazy. For reasons, right? So I then decided to click on his show to hear what he had to say because he was giving me the news. And he pretty much expressed a lot of the things that I felt, but then he also gave some information that I was unaware of. Oh, what information? When I heard that news, mm -hmm. that Gilbert Arenas... Mm said Kobe Bryant was trash on defense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I knew we have a problem. Oh, problem. I knew we have a serious problem. Here's why. The sports media landscape is evolving so quickly that it's becoming very hard to keep track of what's real and what's fake. It's becoming really hard to keep track of what's good and what's bad. Because there's so many voices, there's so many opinions out there, and there's all of this noise, and it's really, it's, it's becoming, it's starting to get hard to understand, okay, who are the guys out here that are putting out quality information, not just content? Just, let me repeat that. Who are the guys that are out here putting out quality information, not just content? Mm -hmm. Well, content is just videos. Mm -hmm. Quality information is what's being said in the videos. And that's a little bit harder to find. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay. Let me understand what was going on. Let me actually search for the quotes. So I did some research and I came across an article from the Sports Rush where they were addressing this. And the article essentially says, Gilbert Arenas was one of the most dynamic NBA guards in the 2000s. Mm. Despite having his career cut short due to injuries, when healthy, he would routinely make fans giddy with how entertaining his game was. Even though Asian Zero never came close to winning an NBA title. He was a lethal force offensively. During the three years of his prime, the sharpshooter torched the league, lodging 27.7 points per game on 43.2% shooting, giving all his talent. It's natural for the former NBA player to look down even at some of the best defenders the league has ever seen. However, his recent claims of Kobe Bryant, Kawhi Leonard, and Klay Thompson being trash on defense may have been a bit too much mm. gilbert arena says all of them uh them defense them long well i said a bit too far but i, I we get it long. like the clay thompson's you're going to get smashed on the kobe's they was trash on defense for me Kawhi, 
You're too slow. I'm getting past that. If some of the best guard defenders can't stop him, then who can? Well, according to the 2003 most improved player, the smaller and stronger guards like Patrick Beverly and Marcus Smart would cause him a lot of trouble. It'll be like the Pat Babs, the Marcus Smarts, the stronger guards who can move left or right. They can stop me from just using my speed. I couldn't even bring the ball up the court. He would. Uh, he literally rips me every time. No other player I've ever been uh, ripped from. Him two, three times a game, Arena said. I want to go back to my original comments. I never played against Marcus Smart. Sports media is turning into one of the biggest dirty sections in media period sports media is now becoming this thing where everything goes you don't have to be good you don't have to have any kind of decorum you don't have to think about what you're saying you can just basically cut on a mic spend fifty thousand dollars on a set and just start talking and just start talking just start filling up the air and just start talking and all of a sudden you're gonna you know grow into something big which in my opinion is diluting the understanding of NBA fans. When you when you when you ingest trash, you yourself become trash. Mm, this is what's happening. Ouch. First of all, some NBA players get to hide behind the veil of, well, I played in the NBA, so therefore I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I, I know what I'm talking about. Actually, I know one of those those guys. Yeah, I guess y'all are friends, but that nah. So because you played in the NBA, you think it's it makes sense to say that Kobe Bryant was a trash defender on me? Well, I did some I did some research. Oh, you did. You, know? you Googled. All right, let's Google. What'd you do? I did some research mm. to understand what really took place when Kobe Bryant and Gilbert Arenas faced each other. Oh. Because apparently. Kobe Bryant was this trash defender, uh -huh. this trash defender. And I heard a lot of people that were coming to the defense of Gilbert Arena saying, well, <laughs> Kobe Bryant made all of those defensive teams on reputation. So let me ask you, when did he, what, what years did he make it on reputation? And if Kobe Bryant made all of those defensive teams on reputations, what on reputation, what NBA players that actually made defensive teams didn't make, uh, didn't make it on, because of reputation or better yet, better yet. The players that made less defensive teams than Kobe, because Kobe made all those defensive teams on his reputation, and those guys made a limited amount of defensive teams, then how terrible is it? How terrible? Just how trash were those guys on defense, actually? When you have morons running amok, this is what happens. Let me get to the stats. Let me get to the stats. Kobe Bryant versus Gilbert Arenas for his career. Kobe Bryant scored against Gilbert Arenas 29.8 points per game. He got 6.2 rebounds, 6.4 assists, averaged 1.4 steals, uh, shot 48.1% uh, from the floor against Gilbert Arenas, shot 44% from Gilbert uh, against Gilbert Arenas from the three, shot 80% from the free throw line when he faced Gilbert Arenas, right? So this is Kobe playing against Gilbert Arenas, who, by the way, never, not ever, ever, ever in his career made not even one single all-defensive team talking about who's a good defender now the problem is him on offense has nothing to do with me <laughs> like, that sounds cute though but that, that has nothing to do with me sir like i didn't guard kobe I, I was the i was the point guard um i was the point guard i didn't i didn't you know like he guarded me because i was the scorer so let's let's see what your google tells you now, let's get to Kobe's num uh, Gilbert Arenas' stats when he faced Kobe. Well, Gilbert Arenas, the guy that gave Kobe 60, because this whole conversation is based on the one game that Gilbert Arenas scored 60 points. Again, this is the whole claim to fame. Gilbert Arenas playing against Kobe shot 40.6% from the field, shot 31.3% um, from the three, and averaged 24.2 points per game for the games he played against Kobe Bryant. What am I? What, what, help me figure it out here. Well, then that's... Unfortunately, that's horrible for you, sir. I averaged 24 against Kobe. And my first two years will be counted into that. And my injured years will be factored into that too. So when I was a rookie playing against a three-time, four-time All-Star, two-time champ, and I get in the game for two, three minutes, that would count towards 
that would count towards 20 fucking four a game. Mm -hmm. My the second year, right? Where I'm still developing, whatever I scored in those two games will count against the 24 also. When I hurt my leg and I'm playing hobbling and, you know, I'm coming in, I'm playing for Memphis and shit like that, that counts too. So now let's get to the reason I can say the shit I say. Since I'm averaging 24 with my whole career. Now, if you're me and your last eight games, fuck it. Your last seven, let's take the claim for fame. Let's take 60 out of it, sir. Let's take 60 out of it, right? So that means one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's eight games. We're going to take 60 out of it. So those games, the score, 33. 35, 37, 21. Damn, he was playing good defense that day. He, me, he owed me the 21. 29, 34, 37. Without the 60 points, I averaged 32 points against Kobe Bryant. If you add the 60 in for my career when I got to D.C., my 30 or 21 years old, I averaged 35 a game in the eight games against Kobe Bryant, 30 fucking five. Now you ask me again, can he play fucking defense? Because if someone told you that this dude averages 35 a game in the last eight games against that man right there, you will call that man on defense hot trash. You should have knew there was a problem if you'd have known that I came off the bench and I'm playing a few minutes, right? Played a few minutes and I still averaged 24. 35. A game. Trash. You should go back to what my coach said I was very good at geometry. I was very good at angles. I knew he couldn't move left to right very well. So I took advantage of his flaw. You are a good defender in your realm, not the realm I put you in. Now, since you don't know nothing about me like that, because 60, 60 points is my, my, my name to fame, whatever the fuck you want to say. Now, If you want to do some research, you know, I'm looking at the all defensive teams. Karolinko, you know, he had to guard me when I hit 51, right? You should see what I did against him, right? Chauncey Billings, you should see what I against, did, get, uh, did against him. Larry Hughes, Larry Hughes, first team all defense. Larry Hughes is, I need you to think about this. Larry Hughes, first team all defense, right? Eric Snow, defensive player. LeBron James, defensive player. All three of these dudes on the court. Ray, um, uh, was it um, what's the dude with the wild hair? Wild, they called him Wild Thing. Ray Zhao, defensive player. I averaged thirty four in the series. Four defensive players out there. They got that fucking work. I think the one thing that you, you you're not realizing is my brain is my asset studying, understanding human behavior is my, is my gift. That defensive team got 34 a game. Swiss cheese, trash. Bruce Bowen, come on. You, 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 whoever you named, whoever you want to name as a defensive player, you go look up the numbers. Gary Payton, trash. Someone asked me, hey, is it personal between you and Gary Payton? Because every time you go at him, like you go, when you get, when he, when, when you get him, you take it personal. Rajah Bell, fit that fuck, huh? 
54. Like, what are we talking about? I was the point guard. You didn't get it through that thick-ass skull of yours that I had shooting guards sticking me because I fucking was too different. Let me show you how different I was. This is swag moment. Swag moment. I'm going to swag you. Defense. Trash. They do this to themselves. Let me see. Let me, let me read. I, I know you don't know me and, you know, I, 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 when should I use? I mean, I don't know when to use this. That I don't know when to use this, right? Um, I don't know when to. I don't know when to use this information. I don't know if I should use it now. Or I should use it when you say, "What have you done?" <laughs> I don't know. Um, I mean, oh, man. Wait, where, where is that? Where is this stuff? It's just, man, y'all. These dudes, man. See, I'm, I'm I'm a humble servant. I talk my shit because I can back it up. Man, I'm never gonna throw anything out there for you know you to for it to be used against me. Always understand that there's always something underlined about what, what I do. Oh, I gotta plug my phone up. So, so everybody, hey, everybody, can I ask you a question? It's just a simple question. If you scored 35 points a game your last eight matches on any individual <laughs> in the NBA, are, they, are you going to call them great defensive players or are you going to call them trash? I'm sorry I hurt your feelings, but I, I'm pretty sure it's hurt now. I'm pretty sure it's hurt now. Barbecue chicken is what I was serving up. Lunch meat, sir. Easy work. Easy work. Guaranteed good game. Easy work, sir. All defense, they, they ain't one defensive player that made that first, second, third team. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, I, I, I mean, I didn't know he was your favorite player. If I knew that I was going to get this from some random ass dude, I wouldn't have never said nothing. I would have kept it to myself. Defensive player, defensive player. So I'm, I'm gonna pull out. I'm gonna pull it out when. So we done with that now. So now you see why, sir. I said he was trash. So no matter what your feelings say, no matter how hurt that I hurt your soul, do I need to say the numbers again? Thirty five. 37. 20. Hey, what year? What year was he defensive player? Because no, if he's in this year, remember, 35 and 37, he's a defensive player of the year. I averaged 36 against him. You know, you, you know how you put the math together to divide about two because we only played him twice. 21, 29, 34, 60, 37. You, my... 60, if you ever heard me talk, 60, 60 is not, is not the claim for fame. The 37 was. The reason 37 was is because he said personally he was going to shut me down. He was going to stop me. Him and the rest of them jack-offs 
were going to stop me. So that means for whatever days that they focused on shutting me down, I still had 37 points. And remember, Kobe's my favorite player. That's why I got respect from him. Because his accolades didn't mean shit to me. and He knew it since I was little. I'm the only NBA player, or shit, I'm the only regular folk, that he allowed to have his rings duplicated. So the same five rings Kobe have, I have. So... Should I hurt your feelings by flagging? I'd do it any fucking way. That's year one. Mm -hmm. Year two. Year three. Oh shit! No, these are the first two. Sorry, these are the first two in the in the two thousands. That's the third one, and these are the last two. So the only way you get these rings, so this is not, this is not um. This ain't family and friends. <laughs> um. So we got that out of the way, right? We we know why. Uh, I, I'd say he was trash on defense, right? So since we got that out the way, now let's get to your Giannis stuff. I hope we can still be friends after this. <laughs> you know, I just, you know. Hope you don't take this type of stuff personal. No. Okay, so. All right. Okay. Okay, is this one one day ago? Oh, no, we're going to keep the one day for last. That, that feel good. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 NBA checks. Da, da, da. Uh, let's see what you said here, sir. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here are my thoughts. And crazy. Paul said, Paul said, put some respect on Dream's name. First of all, that move Dream made up on the baseline with one arm with the one arm fake layup. They still doing that today. Stop it. Uh, Paul Pierce said. So I'm happy to see a current NBA player actually say something um you know to give it a reading so here are my thoughts and uh, i'm gonna be honest i'm gonna be 100 honest yo but arenas is a troll he is a troll mm -hmm. uh even if you look at the title of his video <clears throat> he put up there uh hakeem olajuwon scamming people now gilbert arenas uh is an idiot sorry to say he's an idiot 
And I think that maybe a part of his sense of humor in there, uh, because Gilbert Arenas is a bigot. You can, you can believe it. I've heard him talk about foreign players. And incidentally, if foreign players spoke the way that Gilbert Arenas spoke about American players, y'all be up here hollering about, oh my God, they hate, they hate us and they hate us. But when Gilbert Arenas is doing, y'all be sitting up there chuckling with him, right? Uh, abiding by his nonsense. But Gilbert Arenas is a bigot. I can hear the way that he talks. So maybe I'm sure in his mind that when he put like scamming under there, probably like, ah, because Nigerian scam and Gilbert Arenas, I mean, uh, the Lodge one's a scammer and all of these different <laughs> I didn't even know he was Nigerian. <laughs> I, the, the reason I didn't know he was Nigerian because he played on the USA teams. I, you know, it can be confusing. I, 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 I don't know. But that, that's a funny joke. That's You said it. Thanks. Here's my thoughts. I don't mean to offend. Oh, I mean, I don't mean. I'm going to just say what I think. Yeah, say it. I think Gilbert Arenas is only impressive to dumb I'm sorry. I think only dumb think that Gilbert Arenas is smart. I'm sorry. The other day I heard someone say, he's so articulate. Gilbert Arenas is, arti the guy speaks English in hieroglyphics. The guy, Gilbert Arenas is the only person I've heard that can talk for about 10 minutes and say absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> the guy will be up there shouting, I guess you don't watch a lot of YouTube in the beef sector. <laughs> she, you, <laughs> trust me. You go down there, goddamn it, trust me. They, 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 you'll get a whole lot of nothing for hours. Okay? Just, you know. Holding and hollering and screaming. Have you ever seen Gilbert Arenas get into an argument on his own show? Have you ever seen a Gil Gilbert Arenas get into a... If you want to know what it's like watching Gilbert Arenas argue, go sit down, put like a toy between two or three year olds that they both want and watch them fight over that toy that is essentially what it's like listening to gilbert arenas uh, argue the guy starts screaming and hollering at one point i'm looking at this dude like yo is this dude is he is he okay is he okay that's the first thing second thing i gotta call and i gotta i'm sorry i'm sorry gil we, we trolling I'm, I'm joking it's all jokes so don't don't get offended it's all jokes yo where's gilbert arenas from this here has like 15 different accents accents ain't you from florida you sound like somebody that's from either New York, Maryland, or the DMV area, Florida, and sometimes California. Bro, where you from? You just said every. <laughs> you just said everywhere I lived, Florida. Mm -hmm. I was in D.C. for ten years, and I was raised in California. So, okay, you was on to something, I'm sure. But the three you named that I sound like, that's where I live. Mm -hmm. he be having this accent that nobody understands I don't even know where you're from I don't know where this dude is from but anyway back to the content we're just jokes we're just I don't mean it I'm just joking <laughs> that's how he act that's how this dude be acting listen Gilbert Arenas I think is an embarrassment to um, uh, sports media I 100% believe he's an embarrassment I do I think that the existence of a Gilbert Arenas in see this is the problem I think I believe who gives a fuck about your opinion what, what does that have to do it, that, the, your opinion doesn't actually make it right your thoughts how you feel has no merit have you not, not have you not watched how I body people? Because they got feelings. I beat them with facts. Listen, two plus two is four. I don't care if you feel it should be another number. I'm, that's not my prop. Four. If I yell really hot, four. Right? You cry, four. It's still four. Okay? So I, I, don't, I don't care how you feel about what you're about to say. Is it facts or not? In sports media... I think it requires that there are checks and balances uh, within the system to correct these type of things. What am I talking about? Gilbert Arenas represents NBA players, right? He represents them. So to me, when you have guys out there going out there saying idiotic things, I believe it's important that you have people like Paul Pierce and others call him out and say, bro, slow your roll. You sound dumb. When he told me 
Stop. What did he say? Did he say it was true? Did he work out with Hakeem? Did he tell you that, hey, I worked out with Hakeem and he made my foot work? No. The facts are not one player he trained in the lap. Do you not remember what era I came from? I came in 2001. That means Hakeem was training. Every year I was in the league. I'm a high level player, right? Right? So that means I will be interested in training with someone who has footwork. So again, answer me this. Can you name one player he trained that stood up for him? You're embarrassing all of us. Let's get to the uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo thing. First of all, um, Hakeem Olajuwon charging you $50,000 a week. Y'all do realize that Hakeem Olajuwon makes more than what he's charging these guys. You do realize Hakeem Olajuwon is worth more money than Gilbert Arenas. You, 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 do, you, you do know this. You do know Hakeem Olajuwon earned more money off the court with his brain than Gilbert Arenas did on the court. Hakeem Olajuwon is a real estate tycoon. He's worth over $320, $40 million. That's Hakeem Olajuwon. So if Hakeem Olajuwon is charging you $50,000 a week, he's charging you for his time. That's what he was doing. If I'm worth 300000 if I'm worth $300 million and you want to come and pick my brain, my boy, you're going to have to pay me up some serious cash. Number one, so you respect my time. Number two, because my time is money. And for me to sit up here, get dressed, get into the gym, come up with a workout program for you, what I'm going to do for free? Hell no, I'm not doing it for free. Number one. Number two, in the case of Giannis Antetokounmpo spending 50000 with a chemo, let's call it an investment. Dudes throw 100000 in a strip club. Now, all of a sudden, when somebody's charging you $50,000 for something, this is going to improve your basketball game. Now, all of a sudden, what? You screaming and hollering? You keep shouting and screaming? If, if Giannis is able to incorporate some of those moves into his basketball game and he goes on to become a better player, what's the value of $50,000? That's the same. And finally, the third thing. In theory, what you're saying, correct. He's te- Oh, my God. That's I know. What happens when you talk about this? What happens when you're trying to explain some dumb stuff some dumb dude said? That, that's exactly how I'm feeling. Me sitting here trying to explain to some dumb dude that never played the fucking game about a dude who's known to be a workout guru who learned from Kobe watching, studying, watching film. Me trying to explain to you that it was a waste of money, kind of really irritates me. Giannis training with Akeem Olajuwon makes perfect sense. If you watch Giannis, and I was watching some Akeem highlights, Giannis is the more effective player in the in the open court. But when he gets into the half court, he can be limited at times. Giannis can only really attack facing up his uh, f- uh, facing up his defender when he's facing him. He's not as effective using his back. And when he does play with his back against the basket, he's not as polished. Mm. So if you go work with an Akeem, you can polish your post moves. You can have better footwork to score more efficiently in the post. That's number two. Number three, you can actually start to plan for the future by incorporating all of these different skill sets into your basketball game now. So when your athleticism begins to diminish, at least you can lean on a post game that works. Hakeem Olajuwon, I'm not Hakeem Olajuwon, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar wasn't jumping out of the arena. He had a sky hook and some other moves that were unstoppable. So for you to say Giannis should, so who should go work with you? Well, hold up, ain't this the same Gilbert Arenas to say Giannis on the needs to work on his game? Well, yeah. Gilbert, since you have, so that is a question should, you should have asked yourself before you opened your mouth. If I'm the dude that says he should work out with someone, that means I know his skill set, I know what he needs to work on, and I would know the trainer for that skill set. I think the problem here that me and you are having is you're probably an 80s and 90s guy, right? Right? And you're 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 invested in this in the emotions of the past.
the, the, the problem is there is a reality check. And you, you, you're about to receive it because I have to ask you some questions and you're going to have to go do some research and you're going to fall short. Have all of this experience. Who the players are training with you? Why ain't nobody calling you up to train with you? This is what I'm trying to figure out. Where are these stars? Why are they not calling you up? Oh, <laughs> since you asked. <laughs> Didn't. Since you asked. Since I am a trainer. Since I train. You know. Love it, love it. Love it, love it. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Ooh, Lord. Hey, wait, where's my pick? All files. I need all files coming up. Okay, who don't? You know, man, you know, I got to show you a bunch of tech message DMs, you know, <laughs> pick, the, you know, LeBron, LeBron, son, you know, <sighs> shit, list goes on, man. It's crazy. Got to send video to Devin Booker. Man. That's cool. We'll get there, though. We'll get there. You know, it's just, see, I thought it was already loaded on my, my shit, but, you know, since you want to know, you know. Look at LeBron. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think there was just a video of me training um Garland and um Jordan Clarkson, you know. You know, it's just a little little light work. Um little light work, little light. Work. Okay. Let me see if I can put these bop bop bop. See, I can't I can't see the text, so I'm gonna just load it all up on. Let me just load all up. Let me just load it all up in here for you, sir. All the people I train with, all the high level people I train with. All the people I work with, you know. I mean, I'm pretty sure you've seen, you know, like some of these players kind of play like me, right? I mean, you should have noticed, right? And the best part of it all, I don't even charge a dollar. Not one, not one cent. Never charged, never charged a man a dollar for working out. Think it's rude. I'm sorry, that's just me personally. I just think it's rude. It's fucking rude. So you know, while while these pictures is loading, you know, just give you some background. I wake up at five thirty five o'clock every morning and I train kids, um, my son plus other kids, you know, that's going to be there every morning when I'm in town on getting better. And I charge nothing, sir. Zero. Oh, let me see. Uh, let me see. Charge zero, sir. No, not a dollar, man. Kids come to see they get better. I train them, but my browser is having trouble sharing your video. See now, now this is making me mad because you look like you, you know, like you winning. <laughs> okay, bruh. Okay, here we go. Um. Oh, you guys can't, you guys can't see this, huh? Wait, hold on. Let me see. Let me see Charles. Hold on. You know, I'd be having. Let me see. Share the screen. Can you, can you guys see that? Now you guys can see that, right? So, um, you know, I was a, uh, you know, I was Bronny's first trainer, and Bryce. Mm -hmm. 
Let me see. Who is this? The, the, this is a, um, you know, kid who played for um, Yeezy. Right? Yeezy. You know, uh, he plays for Kentucky right now. This is what's his message to me. Hey, was one to ask you, bro, we just played in Canada for Kentucky and I played solid. I didn't turn the ball over. I played D. I did everything, but I didn't take a shot, a lot of shots that I know I could shoot because I just wanted to get warm up. But before I could even get warmed up, I'd be out the game quick as hell. So I never got comfortable at all. I would hit a shot, then miss, then I'd be out. And we got hella guards and we all. Not. So the kids I train ask me questions all the time. Right. So this is how his name is. Dot. Um, this is Rob Dillingham, right? So you can Google and see how great he is, right? This is Easy Money, right? It is, I think his name is Easy Money Sniper. They usually call him what? Kevin Durant? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. He's sending me post-up videos so I can critique him. Mm-hmm. Ah, that's just Chris Brown. I just want to throw that up in there. <laughs> sorry. I, 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 sorry, that's Bleacher Report. They're just asking for a video. I'm sorry. I, just, just don't mind me. You know what I mean? That's just a little swag. Um, but that's two chains. Here's two chains. Hey, bro, bringing my family to town for LA for a week or two. Do you know someone who can work with uh kids hoops six to seven years old? Eh, you know what I mean? You know, Mario Chalmers is a little swag. John Wall, you know what I mean? You know, helping him work on his body, tell him what he got to do to get back in the league. Uh, Bradley Bill, I'll be out west in Phoenix at the end of the month, getting ready for move to move mid-August through September. I'll be back and forth to L.A. We can definitely try to shoot for then. Um, hold on. You know, because I don't want, you know, I don't want you to think that up. <laughs> I ain't out here doing God's work. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> I'm joking. Oh, let me see. Let me see. Um, should I even got Lexi Brown here? Let me go on. Where Lex at? Before, before we even uh, got to the show, Um, when I was uh, showing her how to work the pick and roll. So even when I'm not in the field, I get videos and moves sent and I critique them, send them on back. Um, I can't. Hold on, y'all. Can I? Okay, let's see. Mm -mm. Okay, hold on. Let me, let me see. Can I share the window? All right, let's go. All right, so we got. All right, let me see. Can you see this? Oh, you guys can't see that. No. And Charles, right? Charles, that's me right there with, with Garland. That's me right there. There's Garland. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. You see me in the back right there? See me in the back? Mm-hmm. I'm not. This ain't yoga. <laughs> this ain't yoga, son. You know what I mean? You know, showing the kid how to get low when he's exploding. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let me see. Damn, I oh, you see, this is Lex. This is Lexi. I have to show you the pick and roll trick uh, and down screen move when they're fighting through. Try to when people are trying to muscle through, right? Yes, please. So I in this, I had to videotape. I used the chair as a defender to show her how to get through the screw uh, the the screen and what she should do. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, 
the list, the list goes. Let me see. Who is this? It's... Okay, yeah, you know, you know, since you like to ask questions, right? It's Devin Booker sends me a video, you know, crazy jab step, and he wanted me to add, you know, hey yo. You're so good at the pull-up, it's hard to stop it anyway. Add it in and out to freeze him before you step back. So it's attack the top of the leg, quick in and out, freeze, then step back. It stops them from reacting because once he drops his right leg, the quick in and out makes him think you're going to cross back over. So he put all his weight on his heel, and then you step back. Fucker might fall. Got you. You will see it soon. You happy yet? So when you ask, I got to have receipts. Hey, I've never been in the dunk contest, right? I've never been in a dunk contest. <laughs> but I'm getting credit for two dunk contests. Hey, Dream, Dreamer, this is how my mind works. I want you to hear it from the horse's mouth. Thoughts of dunks that he couldn't do, but he knew I would try. And some mm -hmm. of these dunks, I'm like, Gil, man, you're trying to break my neck. But uh, <laughs> the, two, the two dunk contests that I won, he gave me those dunks. So mm. he told me, like, hey, man, you need to do this dunk. And both of those dunks that I did in 01, I mean, 02 and 03, I did it one time and I was in the dunk contest. And in wow. the, one and the second one, between the legs backwards, I did. That was my first time ever attempting that. That's the first time I ever made it, and I couldn't do it again. I, for some reason, I tried it at basketball camps. I tried it at celebrity games. I could never do that dunk again. So, Jason Richardson, you know, two-time dunk champ. I can't dunk. <laughs> but my, I watch how he jumps. I, I watch how he jump, jumps. I look at the dunk contest jumpers possibly trying to figure out what they would do to give him dunks I know will be different. So that reverse baseline, this dunk, throw it up, and then and then twist at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I created those. I've been doing shit like this for a long time, sir. We'll get back to you. Let's let's see what else you got to say. No. I mean, you asked, you know, who have I been training? And, you know, I do this shit every day for free. Not a dollar. That, that jersey that LeBron gave me, that was the gift they gave me for training, you know, his sons. I just like that shit. I just like watching talent and then creating shit for them. That's that's what I do. Hmm. Why did I call you up? Finally, I'll say this. I think Gilbert Arenas is like an older dude that doesn't know when to give up his childhood. I think he's one of these dudes that wants to be young forever. Yeah, I'm gonna ask you a question, sir. Just like a barber, right? If it's a good barber, you keep going back, right? You keep going back to a bar same thing like training, right? When you have a good trainer that's training you, you go back every summer, which means you know, LeBron keeps going back to the same Dwayne Wade, Jimmy Butler. You know, Steph goes to the same person. Curry goes to the same person. Shea, you know, I'm so fucking good. I train trainers, um, right? How to train NBA players instead of just being a fucking rebounder. Um, the question is, name one player that worked out with your favorite guy, Hakeem, and went back.
Now, now if I told y'all that I took a hundred shots and only made three, but I got a little help with those three, y'all wouldn't pass me the ball now, right? Y'all wouldn't pass me the ball. If the weather man, if you took a test, 100, 100 answers and got three, right, with help, I'm dumb. Hakeem has trained, you know what, let's rewind. This ain't about his fucking resume as a fucking player, right? That shit, don't, I don't give a fuck what. Who he was as a player. I never said he was trash or he sucked as a player. See, I think that's what the problem is. Y'all using his resume as a player like he's a great fucking teacher. Right? Two different men. There's the player. Top 10. Top three centers of all time. Best feet work ever. Then you have the trainer. That trainer has a fucking resume. The resume looks kind of like this. Since 2000, he's done had over 100 athletes. A lot of big men. Not one has went back to his training. Not one big man has implemented anything that resembled something on that floor. Now, what you guys want to use is you want to use Kobe Bryant, whose feet were, came from Michael Jordan, right? You want to use, you know, Carmelo and his good feet work that went to him, right? You want to use LeBron James, right? I will give you those. How about the other 97? How about that? How about the other 97, sir? How about all the big men that ever went there? Hmm? We're going there for footwork. Where is it? Where, where, all these players that, that went through there, the, the, the money wasn't the problem. If the nigga would have charged $5, I'd have like, oh, hell no. Going there to get nothing free. If it would have said $5, sir, I would have been agitated. You have a hundred players. You got videos on internet. Do you want me to go through them? Travel after travel after travel after travel. And you learning from the best. Who the fuck am I? Who am I? And I told, I, I've said it. I will, I will spend 50000 for my son to go there because my, my son already had the basic fundamentals of footwork. Right, so when y'all yell out, Jokic got footwear and Embiid, the question is, did Hakeem teach it? No. Stop giving him people he didn't teach. We see his. We see. We can go online and see some of the players here. Come on, the Kevin Cato's. Yep. Y'all mean he's in. Remember all those centers that was in Houston? Yeah. Yeah, he was training. He was training. Mm -hmm. Y'all mean favorite move, huh? Left, and then spin, travel every time. So that's, that's the question you got to ask yourself. Name any play. These, JaVale goes back now to the same person, which is a guard. He goes to a guard foot footwork, which makes sense. If we ask the question, who has better footwork, guards or centers? So if Kyrie and Le, uh, DeMar DeRozan, who have impeccable footwork, if they had a camp for footwork and then Embiid and Jokic had a, a footwork camp, I can tell you everyone's going to Kyrie now. See, the problem is, 
footwork is footwork is its own thing, right? It's, it's, it's its own thing. Has nothing to do with the basketball. Hey, I'm gonna show you just so you can see, man. Right? When when you say I'm trolling and my shit is actually together, I'm gonna show you. This is what working with this is one of my guys too chicago works with kids fucking amazing listen this is how f- when you're working with feet and you're trying to get the understanding of footwork this is how it looks so this is what they should be doing for a few months before they even touch the floor everything is tight now tight handle boom we getting there tight handle boom we getting there get now Hit him fast. Boom. Hit. Kind of looks how kind of looks how the players are looking, right? That's how the NBA is playing, right? A bunch of guards with impeccable footwork. See, this wasn't supposed to be all like this. But people like you, right? That just takes the baseline. You think in the man's career, you think the man's career is his, like, he inherits this. If that was the case, right, and we get to use our legacy in something and make it in here, have you ever heard of Michael Jordan? Michael Jordan, like everybody heard of Michael Jordan, right? All right, that's your guy, right? Michael Jordan, probably the greatest, greatest basketball player that ever lived, right? The best talent, the hardest worker that ever stepped foot on a basketball court. Woo! MJ the GOAT. All right. Mm-mm-mm. Right. Hold on. MJ, best player to, to ever walk this planet, right? The sharpest mind, right? We've watched him, right? So we know that MJ is MJ. Okay. So you would think Michael Jordan knows talent, right? You would know he knows because he's the greatest. He's the best offensive player. He would know what to look for in talent. Right? Okay, let's just let's just see how the shit don't work, right? Right? Michael Jordan, when he went to um, Charlotte. His first pick, Adam Morrison. Okay. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, he could have had Rudy Gay. Mm Mm-hmm. All right. Could have had Rudy Gay on his team. All right. So that's... Brandon, his next pick, lottery. Brandon Wright. Mm-hmm. Could have had Tim Noah. The next pick. Right. Next pick. I mean, it, this, it, it, it gets worse. DJ Augustine could have had Brooke Lopez and, you know, his best pick ever. 
his best pick ever was Shea Alexander, and he traded him on draft day. <laughs> the best pick he ever picked, he traded it. Just because you are great at your sport don't mean you're great at teaching your sport. Right? Hakeem learned his footwork from soccer. See, that's the problem. He learned it from soccer. And he applied it to basketball. He did not learn his footwork from basketball. He learned it from soccer and applied it in, in basketball. And that's the problem here. When you are a high-level player, jumper, dunker, right, you use your jumping ability more than your type 1 fibers. So when you get those JaVale McGee's and all these guys, you have to break them down like they're infants and spend weeks in working with foot development. Now, not one player he, he trained with actually ever got better, right? But we're going to give you the Kobe's and stuff since they was already great. Just give him three. I'm fine with that. Do you guys know Patrick Ewing? Yeah, I'm sure y'all do. Patrick Ewing, right? Hook, turn around, fade, right? Very great with the touch, very great with the fade. He trained, just to show you how hard it is, just to show you how hard it is to pick up a skill, to pick up a talent. Because three days, he's supposed to get this talent in three days. Y'all know Patrick Ewan was in Orlando with Dwight Howard for six something years, right? They practiced morning and night, before games, after games. Every day, you didn't see a turnaround jump shot from Dwight Howard. He's working with a dude, a great, a score, and it couldn't translate. How about all those shooting guards that work with Kobe Bryant, that played with Kobe Bryant? You're telling me, since it's this fucking easy to learn something from a great, why didn't nobody, why didn't no shooting guard learn anything from Kobe Bryant when they was on those teams? Hmm? Didn't Michael Jordan have shooting guards and people that played with him and after him and he was, he was within practice every day. How come they didn't inherit none of the shit that he had going on? Fucking. You think that you can learn how to post up in three days before training camp, man? Like, what's wrong with y'all, man? That's the problem. What's wrong with you? You, you? you think I'm trolling because I said that's a waste of money. You go in there for three days to try to become some miracle. I'm supposed to adapt this shit in your brain for three days. What? Man, you got to spend months, months, and months understanding, learning, Watching tape, watching film, understanding how to be great. How can he teach anybody how to be as fast as him? Footwork he learned from when he was 10. Fucking goofies, man. Now, we're going to go to your, your next one. Giannis exposes Gilbert Arenas. Okay. 
business. So uh, what happened about about, let me say, two, three weeks ago, a story came out that Giannis Antetokounmpo was going to be training with Hakeem Olajuwon. Now, if you know anything about Hakeem Olajuwon, he's one of the greatest centers in NBA history, arguably a top 10 guy. Certainly, Michael Jordan thinks really highly of him. An extremely skillful player, especially in the post. So when the news came out that Giannis was going to be working out with him, I was like, this is a great move for Giannis. This makes perfect sense, given the fact that Giannis is a big guy. And as his, and as his, and as his athleticism begins to wane over time, it would make sense for him to be able to develop a post package to be able to ensure that he uh, continues to remain, remain effective going into, you know, going into the future. But one person thought that it was an absolutely stupid move. And that person was Gilbert Arenas. And not only did Gilbert Arenas think that it was a stupid move, he actually said at the time that Hakeem Olajuwon, by charging Giannis on a Tecumpo 50000 for that workout, was actually trying to scam Giannis on Tecumpo and younger players. So what we want to do is, for those of you who don't remember what Gilbert Arena said, want to play a little bit of what he had to say about Giannis and um, uh, Hakeem, uh, you know, working out together. And then we're going to continue on the show. Hey, don't you you know another NBA player, right? I mean, you know another NBA player that's on YouTube, right? Can can you ask him? Can you ask him when he he trained in the summer? Who did he train with? Every summer, I'm pretty sure he went to the same person that every big man went to during the same time Hakeem is training. Clifford Ray up in Florida. Around 550 calories or less per serving and also a protein plus meal with 30 grams of protein or more per serving. So if you want to give it a try, click the link in the description below or head over to factormeals.com slash dreamers50 and use code dreamers50 to get 50% off. And remember, when you try factor meals by using the link in the description below, remember that you're supporting this channel. Thank you. So that shit kind of look good though. <laughs> Sheet, I might hit the link in the bio. Let me go ahead like this. Like. Let me just read a little bit of what this article had to say here. It starts off with the headline. Giannis Antetokounmpo reveals Hakeem Olajuwon didn't charge him for the price. No, no, no. I, I pay for YouTube uh, premium. Yeah, I'm premiumed up. But this is his video, and he he uh, he has sponsors. So, I'm, you know. You know, some good food, though. I'm, I'm going to let his sponsors play. Shit. No, I ain't no hater. <laughs> Private. Uh, workouts. It goes on. Hakeem Olajuwon recently came under fire for reportedly charging Giannis Antetokounmpo fifty thousand dollars per workout session, but it turns out Giannis didn't have to pay anything at all. Hakeem is one of the best players to ever play the game. Giannis uh, Antetokounmpo said on Sirius XM Radio, "You cannot even disrespect him in no shape or form. He is probably a top ten player to ever play the game, if not the most skilled big to ever play this game." Antetokounmpo revealed he had been willing to pay one million dollars for the workouts. But Hakeem never asked him for anything. So if anybody like me, as you said, two-time MVP champion, two-time MVP champion, seek for advice from the most skilled big man of all time, and I have to pay $1 million, I will pay $1 million. Giannis Antetokounmpo said, in no shape or form that he told me to pay. The 28-year-old wouldn't have had any issue had Hakeem asked, and he would have been taking time out of his schedule for him. Exactly. He takes time away from his kids, away from his home, away from the things that he enjoys to do to kind of help me get better. I mean, this is this is long for someone who didn't talk about money. I'm just being honest. Anatokounmpo said, if he chooses to charge you money, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. So I don't understand, like, I saw things early, like two weeks ago, they were saying, why would you, why was, why he was charging? There's nothing wrong with him charging. Giannis said that just like how you get charged for using a service like Uber, it's more than fair to ask someone to pay for the workouts too. But at the end of the day, in no shape or form, I paid, Giannis uh, Antetokounmpo said. There's a mutual respect from Akeem to me and from him and from me to him. I don't think he was ever in a position to ask me to pay. Greatness doesn't charge greatness. He could charge other play people too. Other people not on that pedestal. He definitely could charge so, so was kobe on your pedestal was lebron on your your pedestal because i think the person So Gilbert Arenas. Yeah. I thought you said Hakeem Olajuwon was scamming people. I, I know. I, I, I did say that. I did. Right? I did. 
I thought you said he was using Giannis Antetokounmpo to scam people. Help me figure it out. That's what you said. I can help you figure it out. It's easy, right? That Giannis came out and said he's going to pay. Giannis came out. Giannis came out and said he's going to pay 50000 like LeBron did, right? And I said, oh, no, made it a big deal. What Hakeem did was like, oh, no, I can't charge you now. The fucking world knows. Because you know why? Training camp was coming up. You know how they asked him, you see this long ass message you got? That was the first thing they were going to ask him. That was the first thing. Hey, you worked out with Hakeem. Did he charge you 50000 They want to know. So obviously, he wasn't going to charge him 50000 after I made it a big deal. Now, the problem is, is it a debunked because he didn't charge him the price he charges everybody else? Like debunking and exposing me is saying that I made up something like 3,000, 4,000, and I made up that he was charging 50. If he's charging 50 and says, hey, you know, this is my boy, I'm not going to charge you, that is not. exposing he got called out and he decided mm, i can't do it now but lebron paid mm -hmm. i guess he, I, I guess greek is bigger than him huh kobe paid javel paid amari paid everybody else paid all right see i was i was hoping someone from his team said something i i, I don't think you know i know charles javel's a teammate <laughs> I talk a little Brian. I train his son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Melo, right? I, I have, I have receipts of why they don't go. I, I have it. I have the receipts. I have their real thoughts. Why you? Why, why you didn't get the point? How come nobody else who worked out with him ever said anything? That's what you said. You said Hakeem Olajuwon was trying to scam people by charging them $50,000 for a workout. Now, let me figure something out. Hakeem Olajuwon net worth. Let me just figure something out right now because I'm trying to figure out. Okay, so Hakeem Olajuwon, according to Sports Kita, is worth about $300 million. $300 million. So help me figure this out. Mm -hmm. Hakeem was going to charge Giannis $50,000 for workout and then use that money to go wipe his ass, basically, right? Help me figure it out. I'm, I mean, I, I think he was going to do the same thing he did when he charged LeBron 50000 Amari 50000 Carmelo 50000 he, he just going to put it in the bank <laughs> with the rest of the fucking money. How hard is that to fucking figure out? Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I didn't know that was something hard to figure out, sir. You just put the shit in your bank like you know the rest of your money. What do you do with your money? Huh? When you get it, you put it in the bank. I'm pretty sure to get 300 million, you got to keep putting shit away. <laughs> Mr. Mr. I'm so plugged into the NBA. Help me figure it out. What the hell is Akeem Olajuwon going to do with $50,000? Number one. A week? <laughs> shit. A week? 50000 a week? Shit. 200 grand. If you got two players back to back, that's 100 grand a week. 400 grand a month. Am I stupid or are you stupid? Making NBA money without actually playing in the NBA or doing anything? What are you talking about? Do you know there's dudes that sit at the gym, trainers, that charge $200 an hour, and they sit there from 5 in the morning to 10 at night every day, Ben Simmons, Ben Simmons, the person you hate, LeBron James, all, all those, $200. You know, you know how I show you Garland and Jordan, Cor Jimmy Butler, $200 an hour. What are you going to do with 50000 a week? Easy. Put that shit in the bank. One. Number two, for a person worth $300 million, how much do you think their time is worth? 
Help me figure it out. Uh, it depends on what he's doing. If he's training, zero. Because <laughs> he's horrible at that. You know, uh, you know, anything else? I mean, he probably has a problem. I'm just trying to tell you what. Help me figure it out. You see, this is the problem with some people. Some people that are always looking for something for free. They're always looking for something for free. Always looking for somebody to give them something for free. If you want value, chances are you got to pay up. If you want a Rolls Royce, you got to pay. I run a Rolls Royce, but I don't want that shit to run like a motherfucking Honda is what I'm trying to tell you. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. I want the Rolls Royce. I'll pay the Rolls Royce for the Rolls Royce price. I'm not paying Rolls Royce money for a fucking Honda workout. Nobody's doing you any favors. Now, you may say, but this is the Rolls Royce. It's going to help me get from point A to point B in style and all of these things. So Giannis Antetokounmpo going to go train with Akeem Olajuwon, and he's going to be able to impart some of the skills that he had during his playing career that's going to help Giannis take his game to the next level. That's not worth, uh, what, what a million dollars or $50,000 or $500,000 to a guy that's making maybe twenty to $30 million a year. You view that as a loss? You view that as a loss? Yeah. But Gilbert Arenas said, that Akeem was trying to scam people. So help me figure it out. The guy's worth $300 million and he's trying to scam people. So help me figure it out. What was uh, Mr. Gilbert Arenas? So this 50,000 that he took from Giannis, let's say he worked out with him four times. He took two of uh, $200,000. What is he supposed to be doing with that uh, $400,000? $200,000. What? Is he serious? Is is he serious? Like two hundred thousand dollars for the month? What is he going to do with it? If he has two players like he had Javel and Javel and Amari, that's four hundred thousand for the month. What are he going to do with it? Now, how about this? Y'all seen the workouts, right? You know what? How about this? We're going to do this, sir. I hope they release that video of Yon. I guarantee you travel. <laughs> guarantee that motherfucker travel. <laughs> let me, let me, let me see something here, sir. Let me just ask y'all. This is just, this is just Siri. I'm, I mean, okay, we're going to go with, uh, let's say we're going to go with, you know, you know, this is 400,000. This is 400,000 in the building. Since you want to run off at the mouth and ask questions, I got a question. Can I ask you something? Does this look like you would spend fifty thousand dollars for? I'm just, I'm just asking. No matter how much money you have in the world, does it, does this look like fifty fifty thousand dollars? Travel. Fifty thousand. Fifty. Hey, dream, dreamer. That's fifty thousand. Right. That set up right there. No, just him. Two dudes on the um, two dudes recording, laughing because uh, Javel traveling the whole time. They giggling and sniggling and shit in the back, talking about travel, travel, watch travel, watch travel, right. Um, um, now that's, that's, that's 50, that's like, I, that's 50,000. Like I have a, I have a regimen. <laughs> I'm driving, I got a boot camp for free. Man. 
exposes. What is he going to do? Buy himself a house? No, help me figure it out. What is he going to do with it? Since he's scamming him. Since he's scamming him, help me figure it out. What is he supposed to be doing with that? So to me, Gilbert Arenas was just talking out of his you-know-what, as he usually does. As he usually does. And here you are talking about, oh, he's trying to scam Giannis. And Giannis, why do you need his moves? The question is, why ain't nobody coming to you? I think we proved that's, that's wrong. Everybody coming to me for the sauce. <laughs> I don't charge it. I, I'm not. I'm not trying to be famous for fucking working out. I can just make fun of the people who working out wrong. Hence why I can do it. And not one person's gonna call me out that's in that basketball world because I train them. They know how much I'm dedicated to training. Why y'all is not seeking you out? Since <laughs> since your moves would be relevant in today's NBA. Why didn't he seek you out? I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to figure it out. Help me out. You said that Hakeem's moves are antiquated, which was arguably one of your worst the fucking word is that? Takes of the year. You forgot SAT? Yeah, shit. You're topping yourself every single week, it seems now. So why didn't Giannis seek out guidance from players like you? Help me figure it out, Mr. Arenas. Weren't you the same one same reason you won't seek me out because you don't like me because <laughs> I've talked shit about you. Man, I mean, shit, I would have did it for free. But I wouldn't have did it three days before fucking training camp. We would have started as soon as the season was over with, you know. My product, I need my, I need, you know. They said Giannis Antetokounmpo needs to work on his body and he doesn't know how to train. Wasn't you the same dude that did that? So let me ask you, what gives you the credibility to discuss? I said he don't know how to train. Yeah. Body was mean feet, not just physical body. Like, you know, when we talk about, you know, his, his flaws and his attributes, you know, them flaws, whatever flaw you read from when he got drafted, I guarantee you the same flaws he still has today. Hasn't worked on one, not one new one. I'm not just making that shit up. Whatever flaws you read that he had coming into the draft, back-to-back -back MVP champion, the same flaws he still has, right? Now, I've already said publicly, if I had to pick, and I got the number one and number two pick, it's him or KD going first. So this is not, this is not hate. I'm picking him one or two. Anything about Giannis Antetokounmpo? Now, some people will say, but it's not about the rings. It's not about the accolades. It's not about so yeah, exactly. So what you accomplished doesn't really matter. But it's fine. Let's remove that out of the conversation. Okay. Who in their right mind would ever think that Giannis Antetokounmpo and Gilbert Arenas are even in the same universe as NBA players? Who would think that? Anybody who had to guard me and play. I mean, everything you know about me, sir, is all by the age of 25. Right? Three-time All-Star. Three-time All NBA player by twenty-five. That's not a that's not a big list, right? So by that age, because I got hurt after that, but you know I didn't have anything. I didn't do anything after that. Now, you know I don't like bragging. You know, but sometimes you, you just sometimes they 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 try you. They try you. When you try me, <laughs> it's all jokes, my dude. Because you're a troll. Now, here this is what we're gonna do, sir. Everything I show you moving forward is gonna be all by the age of twenty five. Okay, or before twenty five. And then you're going to see when other people joined the list or people beat what I did. Now, this came up in college. So I guess I was the first player in college basketball or in the Pac-10. Pac Is this Pac-10? First player in the Pac-10 to, uh, what? what is this? Um, make five threes back to back. Yeah, I'm the first one to do that. Mm. <laughs> mm. You know what I mean?
this is Martin Luther King Day. In 2007, I scored 51 points in a game winner. Okay, these are the four best. This is the four best performances on Martin Luther King Day. Now, sir, I did 2007. The next person, 2009. So, damn, 2009, 27 points game winner by Chris Paul. 2011, first triple double on Martin Luther King Day. Dame, 2020, 61 points. So that means Martin Luther King Day. I was by myself for two years. Okay, little flex. Jokic, you know Jokic. So in 2018, I was the, the number one player with the highest plus in a game. Not Michael Jordan, not none of your little friends that you like to cheer for. No, it was me, the dude you don't like. Mm-hmm. Plus 40 in the game, 2006. Five birds down there. Michael Jordan. Oh, Michael Jordan's right there. He's third. Oh, before I came in the league, before I came at the age of 24, 25, I jumped Jordan because Dame Leonard came after. So Jordan held it. I got in front of Jordan. Oh. Ah, this is Shannon Sharp. You know, when you said, I, you know, nobody won't fuck with me. This is Shannon Sharp. Hey. We should do something together. You know, let's talk tomorrow about getting something going this NBA season. Shannon Sharp. No swag. Yeah. Don't mind that. Don't mind that. Most 40-point games with a buzzer beater. I'm second or I'm tied with everybody. I'm tied with Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, and Dame. So before Dame, I was number one. Now the problem or my swag is this was all before the age of 25. See, Larry Bird retired. Jordan retired. I tied them by the age of 25. Oh, what's up, Shaq? You know, you know, appreciate what you said. I don't know what I said. <laughs> Here we go. Only player in the NBA to average 29, 6, and 2 at the age of 24 and younger. Hmm. We got here. Okay, this one. All right. This one is, so number one is Harden. Number two is Gilbert Arenas. Number three, Kobe Bryant. Number four, Michael Jordan. Number five, Steph Curry. Now remember, Kobe retired. <laughs> Michael Jordan retired. And I wasn't even 25 yet. And this record is 40-point performances with less than 11 shots made. Here's this, sir. 203 pointers made in a single season with also 600 free throws made in a single season. Do, do you see what you're looking at, sir? I created this stat. Not your Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. Not your Larry Bird. No, 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 no. I created a stat. And it took seven years before the next person got into the stat.
And y'all can see who's in there, hard and hard and hard. And <laughs> hard, hard, hard. Let's go, boy. Creating shit that you never even heard of. So I can, you know, so when you say who, just so you know, the, the, the rest of the records that I had out there, you know, I own the record with uh, Wizards on the floor or Wizards Home. I still own the most points in the Staples Center. Um, I'm one of the youngest, top 10 youngest players to ever score 60. I'm in that category too. I own the most points as a visitor on the Staples Center and in Phoenix. By the age of 24. Until Clay Thompson, I held... Most points in overtime, most consecutive points in overtime. Most points in less than 30 minutes, which Clay Thompson ended up taking all of those. I did that all by the age of 25. I got to listen. What y'all, what, you know, what you, what you, what you say, that shit sounds great. I mean, it, it does. It, it sounds great sometimes, you know, um, I get it. You know, when I speak, it don't, it don't make sense to you because you're, we not on the same realm of thinking. I was a monster, man. I'm sorry. I was, I was, I was, I was a killer man. I, motherfuckers went to sleep early when I came to town. Mm hmm. People went to sleep early, man. You know, when I came, when I came in, I was no, I was no, I was, that was nothing easy to deal with, man. I'm, you know, when you hear like, like when you go to Patrick, Patrick Beverly's podcast when I was on it and he tells you a story that he was in college and I was in a gym by myself late at night shooting from half court and he said he's just watching and there's puddles of water just spots all over the place because I'm sitting there for hours when you hear players talk about me you you, you hear Quran. He puts me in my work ethic with Kobe. When you heard Antonio Daniels, who said, Tim Duncan's the best player I played with after Tim Gilbert. He played with Ray Allen. He played with Chris Paul. Gilbert. You listen to Chris Paul. Who's the hardest person you had to guard? Gilbert. Now, I know I don't get no respect from you because you're a YouTuber. <laughs> Equal dollar? Yeah, I, I mean, it's not, you know. But sometimes you just got to you just gotta swag on them just a little bit. Just, a, just to let them know you're not, no, you're not normal. Now, this is, you know, Stephen A. Smith. You know, let me just go up there so y'all can see Stephen A. Smith. You're doing great. I'm really proud of you. Just don't get too wild. Folks at the networks are following you. They're impressed with what, you're, what they've seen. They're just looking for you to fuck up by going overboard. Don't do it. And nothing but blue horizons wait for you, bro. Remember I said that. Be yourself. You would never tell. Would never tell you to be fake. Just saying to treat everything like an audition. That is what the big time is. And the big time money brings. And I'm saying thank you, blah, blah. And I said, and I had to think, I had to reread. What he said, and I'm like, man, this hit different. Treat everything like it's an audition. Now, if you thought I, if they thought I was dumb and I just said things for clickbait, see, that's the problem. You think I say shit for clickbait? I don't clickbait. That's why I can never get. Uh, what was the word um, exposed? Like, do you remember when I said 
about the 80s, right? And then I said that Isaiah Thomas had an advantage, the Pistons had an advantage because he had a plane and all that. And then he, nobody knew that. Then he acknowledged it and tried to use that as, yeah, you should be thanking me. Cool, but did I lie? No. You can, listen, you can talk shit back, but the problem is, all I give a fuck is, did I lie? I don't care how you feel about it. I told you, y'all had an advantage. While everybody was flying commercial, you guys had your own plane. So you got the cities a lot earlier than everybody else. So you had more rest than everybody else. Right? Which gave you a little bit of advantage. Right? It's just a fact. You know? That, that's it's the fact that, that I don't what, what you say after that, you can't change the fact. So you might not like my take because it's not how you was thinking. But when they unlifted to try to come at me and they realized, ah, fuck. I don't like how he said it, but God damn it, we can't. <laughs> God damn it, we can't we can't get him. I'm not a content creator. You know how you say people create content? I'm the content. I'm sorry. When you when you doing responses, sir, it's off of my takes. When someone's doing responses, who's the greatest point guard ever? That's me. Who introduced that? The USA DT. That's me. Everything, everything you talk about runs this way, runs this way. I can wake up. Hakeem Olajuwon's charging. What have you talked about it? Hmm? Fifty million. That's me. Hmm. You know, I'm I'm sorry, right? You think a troll will have that much power over the media like that? I just, I'm just good at what I do. I'm just good at what I do. When I yell and stuff, that's that's <laughs> I'm acting. Right? When you see me sweat through my, my, my sweater, think about it. Think about it. It's a sweater. Right? You usually wear an undershirt for the sweater. See, I, I put lotion on. Right? Didn't wear no shirt on purpose so I can sweat faster. Then you get to yelling, sound like you're doing some shit. <laughs> Have you noticed I only yell with one person? My shit in the basement ain't no, that ain't no soft shit, homeboy. I'm running a better system than motherfucker ESPN. My producers that's sitting back, ESPN. Shannon Sharp, my, my newest ad was Shannon Sharp and Skip Bayless's head produce that he's in here now. So I got the I got the smartest, but see, they they all paying attention, so they know who to, they they know who's moving the needle. Huh, you got Skip Bayless up there now. He got a panel of four people, huh? Huh, that two shit don't work no more. Now do it. Now he got four. Got motherfuckers yelling back and forth. Who was doing that before me? Now, this is what's going to happen moving forward. I'm going to forget you exist like I did before. <laughs> You wait, you wait until I make some points out there and then you respond, right? You get that money and then in the back of your mind, you thank me for the views you give, okay? That's it, right? 
You know, you can keep making your takes. Just, just know when you see them numbers, 35,000, 60,000, uh, who's, who's name? Hmm? Shit popping up. God damn, the motherfucker popping up. Shit, shit popping up. Damn, the motherfucker popping up. Everybody popping up. Yeah. So I'm like, he trolled and he's just trying to get the clicking the views, but my name all in your, your titles. <sighs> See, I was supposed to watch the WNBA game today and do a little playback and I'm over here addressing you. Now, I know this is going to piss you off too. <sighs> well, you know, playback. Mm-hmm. I'm on there now, right? First day, biggest star. Right? We work in equity deals, you know. It's That's... So if you want on there, let me know. I'll hook you up. <laughs> it's just a joke, but I'm for real. If you won't own it, just let me know. I'll go ahead and tell them, I'll let this count in. He's good people. He's stupid, but he's good people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what that means. I got rights to the NBA games, and I get to commentate the NBA games without being flagged. Yay, me. See, I think the problem is, I just, pivot, I, my pivot game was too fast for y'all. See, I went from beefing, 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 then pivoted, then looked back, moved on, and be... Right? You know what I mean? So, look, look, have fun. I, I know your facts can't fax me. Um, you know... But, you know, this was fun. You know, swagging. You know, it was fun. You know, you got your little minions out there cheering. They, they get swag, too. Uh-huh. You know, so. But this was never about Hakeem's legacy as a player. Great. Watch his moves. Teach my son his moves. It has nothing to do with player. Right? It has nothing to do with player. It's the teacher. How he's teaching. Translating the information to the guys. That's it. Well, I guess, you know, within a few couple days, I'll be viral for something else and you're going to be mad. <laughs> Gee, these players attack them. And this is that. Have fun, though. You know what I mean? Don't stop my checks. So, all right, y'all. I hope we... I hope we, um... We came to this conclusion that, uh... You know, his, he was coming from feelings. Like, we, you know, we, every video he said, it was proof that, you know. Okay. All right. Hope we're done here. You know, I'm, you know, I like to keep moving forward. I don't want to have to come back. <laughs> you know, but all right. Okay. All right, my guy, but listen, we all friends, man, you know. You know, y'all see, I like his videos. I, you know, it ain't about, this ain't no hatred, you know. But, you know, sometimes you just got to, you know, you know, keep calling your name. You got to come back at some point, so. All right, guys, I guess because I stayed too long, I didn't get that WNBA game. I'm probably be going, like, two games tomorrow. So, uh, all right, enjoy. Thank you for coming.